Welcome back to Colorado. Mike and I continue our trip around Crested Butte. In this video, we're going to show you how to photograph reflections in a more creative way and use a neat, simple trick for that. And we continue on the hunt for one of Mike's favorite animals. Did we bite off more than we can chew? Coming up next. All right, I have talked Chris into a little hike. We're gonna call it a little hike. We have no idea how far it is. These were the beaver ponds I was looking for. Last time we were here, we stopped for about 10 minutes, but it was raining real hard, so we just kept going. Heading up to these beaver ponds, we're gonna see what uh, what all the fuss is about. Uh, hopefully we'll find something cool, maybe some moose. Supposedly there's some moose, meese, around uh, Crested Butte area. I know there are some reports. It's not like as big as you'd see up in, you know, Rocky Mountain area, but oh, it's not good that I'm already out of breath. We got our water pants, we are ready. this time the quest continues but we have some nice reflections Chris has already found a spot look at this oh man so we have the snowy peaks we have the reflections of these aspen and birch trees oh, here we are by ourselves I just I can't get over this place all right moving around I want to get out the long lens and shoot a like an abstract scene of the reflection, just a reflection by itself in the water. No, no mountains, no landscape, just reflection. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll get the long lens though and, and try a shot like that, see how it turns out. My eyes hurt. Eyes it's hurt? so ugly. <laughs> this place sucks, huh? Yeah. Hideous. Yeah. Get some shots you like? I think so. I'm a sucker for reflection, so... <laughs> There's a, a little bit of movement in the water, and I'm wanting to smooth that out, so I have a six-stop ND filter on. No polarizer. Why not a polarizer, you might ask? Well, the a polarizer cuts glare, right? And uh, the reflection is glare, so it, it's going to make that reflection kind of go away. And I don't want to see underneath the water. I want that reflection, so I'm not using a polarizer, just a regular six-stop ND filter. I have the reflection. I have this little pine tree right in the middle, you know, and I'm just shooting only the reflection and my thought is to, to flip it. And uh, I go, Chris, come here, I'm, this is just genius. I'm gonna sell a million prints of this. And she walks over and she goes, yeah, I already shot that over there. I hate when your wife is a better photographer than you. It's annoying. just make a quick mention of today's sponsor which is my 2022 calendar because nobody else will sponsor our channel so make sure you guys go pick it out uh, in the link in the description below there's only a, a limited order so make sure you guys go check that out we made our way back to the trailhead and had some chocolate muffins for second breakfast thinking of that cheers, cheers to you and i guess if i ever want to switch professions i could join the circus the guest house we are staying at has a large common area with a fireplace and the night before we overheard some people talking about the location they ran into moose. So we knew this would be our mission for later in the afternoon. We made our way back to Crested Butte, stopped for lunch and headed out to find the moose. Oh, I had the, only the 14 to 30 millimeter on my lens so I was able to jump out real fast and we got that that cow moose uh, just running across the road and then went down the other side. So I I got an okay video of it, but 
I was a little far away, but man, she just, she jumped right in front of us on the road. And by the time we got the camera out, she was already down the hill. But that's like, I think the fourth moose I've ever seen. And Chris and I uh, just got done saying how this place looks very like, very moosey. Which, you know, since I've seen four moose, I'm pretty sure that makes me a, an expert now. So this is a very moosey area in my opinion, in my expert opinion. We pulled over on the side of the road just over this pass. This is the Continental Divide. This is literally one of the biggest reasons why we came out here. Obviously the fall colors, but that moose we just saw, we just one-upped it. But there's a bull moose right here off the side of the road. No one can see it really. They just drive by it. And there's a, it looks like a female too. You know what, I'm gonna have to get a better angle of it, you guys. You can't really see them from here. Okay, I'm gonna go up on the hill where I was shooting with the uh, Z7. Oh man, that 70 to 200 and that 1.4 teleconverter really came in handy. I was probably about 60 yards from him, so, and he's just eating, he's not having, you know, we didn't want to get any closer. Uh, that's plenty close to a bull moose. Plus he's got a female there, so we kind of watched and made sure that when he looked at us, he wasn't really just curious. Then he went back to eating, so he wasn't uh, too alarmed by us, but so he's right here behind me, right here. Literally one of my favorite animals. We were down low shooting away. I must have shot, I don't know, like 500 shots in like literally five minutes, all the same thing. Like he's not really doing much besides eating. So it's not like he's doing anything crazy. Like, you know, dunking his head in water with all the moss and you know, he's not doing anything like that. Oh man, this makes me want to do wildlife photography so much more because of stuff like whenever I see big animals like this, the elk and the deer and the bears and, and moose and things like that, I just, oh, I'm so stoked. <laughs> This just turned into a wildlife vlog. We have another move. We pulled over. There's a little trail we were gonna hike. It's a real marshy area, and uh, we're sitting here checking out like these little mockingbirds. And I'm photographing these mockingbirds, and all of a sudden, a bull moose walked into the other side of this meadow. So there's a trail here that goes along the meadow. Chris is probably gonna be operating her binoculars. And I think there's a mule deer over there too. So we see big white butts. Those are mule deer. I feel like we hit the freaking jackpot today. Yeah, so we got moose tracks right along here. So, so the moose, they were right up over here. So I'm gonna put this camera down and turn it off right on the trail. And Chris and I are gonna walk right up here. Okay, that bull is right there. He doesn't see us. We came back and waited because we heard him. And he came back out. He's walking that way now. This might be the most ridiculous day of photography I've ever had. The fall colors, two bull moose. Oh, oh my goodness. So he was just giving me the stink eye. So I'm going to move over here a little ways further away. I was out in that little marsh, but he stopped and looked at me and kind of like snorted. So that's my cue. But I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as we did. This was such an experience for us. Oh, I'm still just on cloud nine. All right, we're going to get out of here now, guys. Say bye bye to Chris. We'll see you guys in the next video in uh, Ure. All right, see you guys there, bye. In the next episode, we leave Crested Butte behind and head towards Switzerland of America, Ure, Colorado. And with Switzerland on our minds, Mike practices his Swiss German, which is hideous if you ask me. Chris was like, nine, 
Nein, Wetterhorn! I'm like, it's Wetterhorn. She's like, no, Wetterhorn. I'm like, that's what I said. And we learned the truth about the real Swiss breakfast. Mama's not here, you know? <laughs> the Swiss and their chocolate. Oh, and we're on into the most elusive mountain-dwelling mammal ever. So stay tuned and see you next week. Bye-bye.